What's up guys, in this video I want to talk a little bit about organic hard surface shapes and how you can get these types of, you know, clean looking models while still using a sub D workflow. Now I'm eventually probably going to do a tutorial on this type of shape and how to sketch it out, how to, you know, use booleans with sub D, that type of stuff, but I still need to plan out that video first. So in this video, I want to go over my entire thought process and workflow for this actual model here. So I posted the final result on Instagram um, yesterday, actually, a lot of people were asking questions. So let's just dive deep into this thing and kind of study it. Now, if you haven't seen my video on detail clustering, I made that a few weeks ago and we kind of discussed why detail clustering is so important and how it makes these designs look way more visually appealing. If we look at this entire model, you're going to see we have quite a bit of empty space here on the front. There's pretty much no detail except a few decals that I added on. And you're going to see the rest of it has quite a bit of detail clusters here in the back, right? All these, you know, clusters of detail kind of enhance the form. Same here for the side, a little bit over here as well. And you're going to see I concentrate these levels of details in specific areas, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. And what I'm also doing simultaneously when I'm clustering these details is I'm echoing, I'm going off the shapes that already exist. Notice right here, this little detail here on the side kind of follows the angle of this um, cutout right here. Notice how this is kind of like 45 degrees. This little detail cluster right here follows that angle. It would look pretty weird if this thing was just a straight 90 degree hit on this piece. And that's why you really want to go with the shape. Just pretty much look at the shape and see how you can build on top of that already existing shape. You don't have to do, you know, anything complex. Pretty much when you're modeling, the, the entire model should be speaking to you and telling you what to do next by the shapes that already exist. You're going to see we have quite a bit of uh, detail clusters here. And if you really boil this down to like the bare basics, you're going to see it's just cubes and cylinders, guys. This is just a basic cylinder, right? These are just some like beveled cubes. This right here is like a, I need to apply the booleans, but you get the idea. It's like a beveled cube as well, scaled. We have a cylinder and we have another shape. I mean, they're very basic shapes, but the more you add basic shapes, the more intricate the model begins to look. Now let's take a look at the original shape here. I actually have the file because I use power save. I'm always saving like, you know, uh, progressions of the model. You're going to see the very first thing I did here was I basically just kind of used sub D to roughly trace out a shape that I liked. If we go into edit mode here, it's very simple actually. Let me turn this off. I mean, it's a very blocky type of shape that, you know, kind of resembles like a bird and a stingray all in one. And basically what I did was I just kind of modeled this with a cube. Look at how simple this is. And then what I did was I basically just used, you know, simple sub D workflow to kind of, you know, round it out nicer. I used some proximity loops here to kind of get these nice curves. I also used a little bit of creasing. You're going to see if I were to um, disable the creases, you're going to see it kind of collapses the shape. So creases are very powerful as well. You're going to see the entire bottom of this is creased because I wanted to get that nice hard edge there on the bottom. Without that crease, it just kind of collapses in. I did not want that effect. So creases are also very, very powerful in a sub D based workflow. This is also a stage where you're going to need to make sure you're using quads more or less. Some triangles and n-gons can kind of suffice here and there, but if you really want to get this clean organic shape without any nasty shading errors, um, with the exception of like poles with quads, right? Now you want to make sure you're using a nice uh, sub D workflow. You're going to see completely all sets of quads. So nothing crazy there. And basically, this is what I do when I'm doing a sub D based workflow. A lot of people ask me this question. When you're doing a sub D based workflow, the very first thing you want to do is get the base shape going. Sub D should always come first on the stack. So you're going to see I actually have mirror and then I have sub D. So I want mirror and then the sub D right here. And after you're done with the sub D stage, this is where you can begin using your traditional Boolean workflow. So for example, check this out to kind of get this, you know, Let's go back to this file to kind of get this detail here in the back. What I did, I just kind of went into side view. I went to my n-gon cutter and, you know, hard ops is automatically going to sort the booleans for you. So you can just kind of go in, just make like a cut. I'm just doing this quick and easy. Um, so we'll go in here, bevel this, I'll have to slice it. And then you can kind of get like a shape like that. 
and kind of scale it in. This is a non-manifold right now, so I'd probably need to apply the mirror before I do that. Cool. There we go. Then you, you know you can just kind of come in here, bevel it, run something like that, and kind of scale that in. That's basically what I did on the other one. You're going to see the shading kind of collapses here, and that simply means we need to make sure we adjust our auto smooth angle. Just kind of move that down until it catches. And if you're using a bevel, you would adjust the bevel angle instead. But I'm not using a bevel modifier right now. But I guess I could. We could just drop a bevel on here, small one. And just to make sure we're catching everything, just kind of adjust the angle there. You know, just a very simple and traditional um, Boolean based workflow. And this is more or less what I did for the entire thing. I just kept stacking and stacking details. So, you know, after I made that shape, I kind of came in here, went to view align, and just kind of came in and cut this. You don't have to be perfect. I'm just doing this quick and easy. You know, you could bevel this thing, and then we'll just uh, symmetrize the cutter over. Cool. And then I just kept stacking and stacking that detail, but I kind of tried to make it a little bit more, you know, clean. I'm just doing this sloppy right now. And that's just the workflow I did. I kept adding in cuts and I kept following along with the shape of this model. So when people see these organic curvy shapes, they tend to, you know, flip out and think just, wow, this is like crazy difficult to do. It's really not because all you're doing is you're just blocking out like a base form, just like we have here. And once you're done blocking out that base form, you're simply using a combination of sub D, which I did here, and you're also using some creasing. Creasing is going to really allow you to kind of tighten up the edges that you want to have tightened. And generally, if I want a perfectly hard edge, I'll just set the crease value to one. And up here, for example, I kind of had like a transition. You're going to see right here, I actually had 0.34 for the crease. This one had 0.38. This one was a little bit lower. And I'm just kind of like gradually easing up and down. So when I am have smaller crease values, we kind of have that softer edge effect. And the harder ones, we have that harder edge effect. So you can also use crease values to kind of ease that transition down. You're going to see if this was higher, it just wouldn't look very good. Notice that. But if we kind of ease down into something a bit lower, it kind of flows very, very nicely with the overall shape. And you can also combine this workflow with a, you know, proximity loop strategy where you just kind of have some of these, you know, tight loops kind of helping to hold the overall form together. It's really nothing super complicated as long as you know the basic modeling tools in Blender as well as how to use creases. So for example, just so you get an idea of how crease works, if I were to run, you know, add a cube and run a sub D, if I wanted to turn this back into a cube with creases, you just put all the edges fully creased because that's going to make each edge perfectly hard. And you're going to see if it's a little bit below one, then it starts kind of rounding down. So that's more or less how creasing works. And this is a very powerful workflow to use in combination with sub D. So after you've traced out and gotten your overall organic shape, what you really want to do is you want to just keep using the traditional Boolean based workflows that I've taught before, right? And you're just going to keep building and building and building on top of the overall shape. So once sub D is done, I mean, you can just basically forget about it. You can apply your sub D modifier as long as you're done with it. And then to start using your traditional Boolean workflow. The only tricky part here is you'll tend to get quite a bit more shading artifacts simply because, you know, the mesh is a little bit more dense. But once again, to fix those shading artifacts, just make sure you kind of slide the vertices out of the way of the bevel. In this case, I didn't actually, um, I actually didn't even use a bevel modifier. I used the bevel shader because um, what happened was there are just so many small clusters of detail that I was just getting a mess of artifacts. So instead of actually using a bevel modifier, you can instead use the bevel shader. So if we go to the shader editor here, let's go to this for example, you're going to see I simply use the bevel shader connected to the normal slot and this is going to give the illusion of a bevel modifier without actually having, you know, those nasty artifacts. And then we can just hop here into rendering mode and just kind of see how it looks. The lighting system is pretty straightforward. I have an HDRI which is set to 1 apparently. Let's see what's um let's see what's in this HDRI. I think it was just the overcast abandoned slipway. And um, what I did was I mixed it with just a black value. So I'll show you what this looks like. Um, what this node setup here is doing is it's basically just displaying the 
overall background as completely black. And I could also, you know, increase this to like white if I wanted to. It's just affecting the overall uh, camera ray and what we're seeing. If I were to just connect this directly, we're going to actually have the HDRI show in. So that's just a cool little trick if you don't want to see it, but you still want to get the same lighting effect. But yeah, really simple to stay overcast HDRI. And I'm also using a relatively simple lighting setup as well. I'll show you real quick what that looks like. We'll turn on extras. Nothing crazy. Um, honestly, this looks complicated, but all I did here was I simply pressed Q and hard ops. I clicked on add lights and I just kept cycling through the lights until I found one that I wanted. Um, you need to make sure the cursor's in the middle. And then you can just, you know, scroll through these different lighting setups with hard ops until you find a lighting setup that you actually like. So for example, just keep scrolling through. You can also press the W key to make it white. And just keep scrolling through till you find a setup that you like. That's really all I did. So nothing crazy. What I want to do is I want to make a more in-depth tutorial for how to actually, you know, model and block out a shape like this. Um, but for right now, I just wanted to give you an overall demonstration, kind of how this model works and really how simple it is when you kind of look at the elements. So it's really nothing too complicated. Now, obviously, if you're not familiar with Blender and don't know how to model in Blender, then this might be a little bit more complex because you haven't learned the tools yet. So if you're new to Blender and you want to get started, make sure you grab our hard surface modeling jumpstart course. It's totally free. It's on our website and it'll get you up to speed in Blender and the hard surface modeling tools in just a few hours. So make sure you pick that up. Links in the top of the description. Anyways, hope this video helped, gave you an idea of how to make a model like this, and hopefully um, within the next few weeks I'll have a more in-depth tutorial showing you how to make an organic shape like this. So until then, I'll see you in the next video.